It is time for us to enter Neri, to enter the palace. Oh. Princess Neri S. This is Yaj. Yes, my lady. Mr. Duke is coming this way. Speak to him, do, while I withdraw beyond the privet. Run away, little Neri, my child, and mingle with this throng. Babies are so tender and so frail. Very well. Well, well, well. What? What do you there, so unsocial? Come on now and hitch your wagon to a star. Well, it's my wagon where I choose. Up with those dear shafts. You marry her and be a lord. Be off. Don't pester me. Come on now. <laughs> Belly, not I. Oh, must I pull you? Don't make me a seat because my nerves can't stand it. Was there ever a eunuch like you? Why does she want to come bothering me? I have never heard of such contempt of the peerage. Here's Granny. Ah, and where are you off to, Mrs. Took? To make a bow pot, Mrs. Yage. What do you call a bow pot, Mrs. Took? A posy, Mrs. Yage. And what's a posy, Mrs. Took? A bunch of flowers, my dear. Mm. In the east, there is a rose, deep and red, that when she open, go pop, pop, pop. Like the crack of a gun. We like Mrs. Yard. In the East, it seems anything is possible. I'll come with you, Gran. Insolent clodhopper. He is frigid. But the boy is not such a fool. Marriage is not what I had in mind. However... Here we are, Jack. At Hare Hatch. It's... Looks a fine place. Yes. And one day it'll be mine. Mine and Miri Esther's. What do you think your family will say? Well, once they get acquainted with her, they will love her as much as I do. I hope so, Dick. Oh, I'm sure of it. Oh, Jack, it's good of you to come home with me. You have been a real chum, as Patroclus was to Achilles. And even more. Oh. Thank you, Dick. You're my friend, Jack, aren't you? Yes, I am, Dick. You'll stand by me, won't you? Yes, I will. And you know that I don't give a damn, Dick, if the world speaks well of you or ill. We were pals together on the ocean, and on land we are comrades to the end. Though a sweetheart sublime, there is always the time when it's fine to have a friend. You will tell my mother how adorable she is, won't you? I'll try. Oh, of course you will. Oh, Jack, do you remember the first moment I saw her? Shall I ever forget it? When I first clapped eyes on Neriesta, she was sitting sucking melon in the sun. And I knew right then that Neriesta would be the only one. She may be dark brown, but heaven blessed her with the sort of charm I never hoped to see. And I found the shade of Neriesta meant not a thing to me. Though she mayn't have social graces and her tastes are slightly queer, you won't find me changing places with the noblest English peer. For I'm more than fond of Neriesta, and I miss her every day that we're apart. From the moment when I first possessed her, Neriesta stole my heart. When he first clapped eyes on Neriesta, she was sitting sucking melon in the sun. And I knew right then that Neriesta would be the only one. She may be dark brown, but heaven blessed her with the sort of charm I'd never hoped to see. And I found the shade of Neriesta meant not a thing to Though she may have social graces And her tastes are 
slightly queer? You will find me changing places with the noblest English peer. For he's more than fond of Neriesta, and I miss her every day that they're apart. From the moment when I first possessed her, Neriesta stole my heart. Come, Jack, let us go and surprise my mother. Your niece, I notice, is not dancing, Mrs. Yard. No, just at present she prefers the swing. Oh, she is not well? Oh, she is well. But as we Eastern women say, she don't have the inclination. A push, is it? Is it a push you wish for, dear child? Is that what you're after? Oh, oh really, what are you up to? Go away, Thoroughfare, now go away. Stop! Was not that difficult? Fine, my dear. Didn't you like it? Oh, oh, look, a peacock. Ours at home are much bigger. Are they, dear child? Much. I want us to be friends. Will you? Oh, you lady. Well, Elizabeth, what is that it? That girl, you lady, she's black. Black or no, she is certainly perfectly beautiful. And she was telling me, only fancy, Lizzie, that the peacocks in her land are much bigger. Bigger. Oh, I should think they were, Eulalia. I imagine they would be. I found her so interesting. I've no doubt of that, Eulalia. Oh, but where is she? Oh, she's gone. My husband had no amorous energy whatsoever. Yes. Which just suited me, of course. Yes. But I, sometimes I think I have too much, in spite of the ravages of time. Oh, come now, Lady Poppy. But I suppose that when there's no more room for another crow's foot, one attains a sort of peace. <laughs> Hark, Mrs. Took, to the peacock. Oh, that's a nasty sound. Sometimes it is nasty, and sometimes it is nice. And what, Mrs. Yad, do you mean by that? When I hear the cry of the peacock, then I know that something is nigh. Maybe good, maybe bad, but something's gonna happen by and by. When I hear the cry of the peacock As it echoes over the lawn Clear and shrill Something will be happening before tomorrow's dawn How I wonder if it's going to be Something wonderful and new Can't you hear the peacock Telling me as it's telling you loud and true that there's something making its way here, just as sure as stars in the sky. Maybe good, maybe bad, maybe joyful, and maybe sad, but I know it's coming by. When I hear the peacock cry, what will it be? What will it be? All I can say is wait and see. What will it be? What will it be? I think it's gonna happen to me. My little Mary Esther, did you hear it too? Yes. I heard the cry of the peacock And I know that something is nigh It's all good, oh so good And it is gonna happen by and by When I heard the cry of the peacock As it echoed over the lawn Clear and shrill, something will be happening before tomorrow's dawn I'm so certain that it's going to be Something wonderful and new Can't you hear the peacock telling me As it's telling you Loud and true That there's something making 
his way here Just to sure his stars in the sky It's so good, can be bad Makes me joyful and makes me glad For I know it's coming by are reunited. Cry. What is she talking about? Liri. Liri Esther, oh. my love. Oh, dear. Oh. What? Oh. Liri. 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 Oh, Captain Dick. Oh, Allah, il Allah. You are going to be a parent. Can you turn your face uh, a shade towards me, Miss, uh, uh, Mrs. Thoroughfare? Uh, do you perhaps know her native tongue, Lieutenant Horwood? Huh? Oh, yes, of course. Ushiawabi Suinya. Vishnu. Not, I fear, one of my most amenable models. But then Mrs. Hurst Pierpoint, in her present mood, is not to be refused. Lay on the flesh tints and she won't, I dare say, be dissatisfied. Oh, Lord, here comes the white, Mrs. Thoroughfare. But, my dearest boy... No, Mother. If Aunt Eulalia wishes it, then I shall fall in with her schemes. After all, I am her heir. And how goes the portrait, Sir Victor? Oh, tolerably well, Captain. In fact, it needs only a few more touches. I'm tired of standing still. Still, indeed. The way she handles that Apollo. Then we shall go for a stroll, dearest Neri. 
Uh, forgive me, sir, but my wife is restless at the thought of our wedding tomorrow. Oh, I quite understand. Come, my oh, love. But, Dick, my dear, I must talk to you. Oh, dear. I... Lieutenant? Lieutenant Horwood? Oh? Oh, oh I'm sorry, Mrs. Thoroughfair. I'm afraid I'm one of those who, at the last trump, would comb their hair. Ah, really? Would you? Why? Probably because I am naturally vain. I adore your hair, and so does Dick. Oh? Did he say so? My boy is very fond of you. And I am very attached to him. I know you are, and that is why I can talk to you about my son. After the ceremony tomorrow, I trust you will all at length be easy. Their reunion, in my opinion, is nothing but nonsense. But Eulalia seemed so fidgety and nervous. And with Cardinal Pirelli come here from Spain specially to officiate. So we thought it best perhaps to humour her. Mm, these black weddings are rarely en règle. I would give the whole world willingly for the poor fellow to repudiate the affair altogether. But no, he's utterly in infatuated by his wife. Oh, dear Mrs. Thoroughfair, it isn't my business, of course, to meddle in souls, but Father Colimani should be skilled to advise. I have an inkling that Father very soon may be resigning his post. Oh. He seems quite put out by the Cardinal. Indeed. Such a pity. None of the chaplains ever stay long. They seem to resent you, Lelia, hauling them out of bed at night to say midnight masses for her. But does she? Oh, my dear, she's merciless. Eulalia's inexorable. Don Jonquil, Pear Ernest. She wore them out. I understand at any rate that she projects presenting Mrs. Richard herself at one of the coming courts. I refuse to believe that that little madcap negress was ever born a Tahitian princess. If only she wouldn't run at one quite so much and, and well, rumple one's hair. She is also very fond, I fear, of Beetle. Yes, I fear my boy is married to a beetle chewer. It's likely to be injurious to her baby at present. Which? Huh? She says she is now expecting a second enfant. Oh. oh, she's such a quick puss. Did you discuss it with Mrs. Hurst? Oh, you Eulalia, so difficult, and unfortunately she isn't mealy-mouthed. Mm. Eulalia says what she thinks. Do I, Elizabeth? Oh. In what particular connection? Oh, you, Eulalia, Lieutenant Horwood and I were just discussing Neri Esther. Ah, the dear minx. I thought she was sitting for Vat's portrait. So she was, Eulalia. But darling Dick has taken her off for a stroll. She has so much excess energy. I would that I could borrow some of it. Oh, I have just exhausted myself going over tomorrow's ceremony with the dear Cardinal. A wedding and two christenings at one and the same time need the maximum of organization. Your chapel is even more charming than I remember it. Thank you, Your Eminence. <laughs> but it must seem a little pokey after the cathedral. How do you like our new relic? Your Eminence. I think St. Lord Thomas' tooth looks a treat now that Eulalia's had it set. Oh, it's only a molar, of course, and rather small at that. We are used lately to big, flashing dentures. Size is not altogether important when one is dealing with the eternity. Dear Eminence, it is good to have you with us. I long to hear the news from over there. Uh, tell me, Eminence, uh, have you been in touch lately with headquarters? Everything in Rome appears to go on much as usual. I was told about Lady Laggard's taking the veil. <laughs> <laughs> Cynthia Laggard. <laughs> Such a gamine at one time. I remember her turning up at midnight mass in the cathedral. Wearing Matador's rig. <laughs> Did you have her turned away? Certainly not. We were all going on to the Denatianthi's masquerade. I think I went to Sappho. Oh, happy <laughs> days. How I long to visit Clemenza once again. Indeed, you must, Mrs. Hurst Pierpoint. I know of no place on earth quite like it. Clementa, that wonderful town. Clementa, where the sun beats in 
constantly down on the heavily gilded door of the place that I call. There is Notre Dame, and St. Peter's in Rome is fine, while St. John the Divine in New York is indubitably divine. I am fond of St. Mark's in Venice, though it's crafty when breezes blow, but the Cathedral of Clementa is the coziest church I know. Cathedral of Barcelona has a beauty to quite non-flop. I'm impressed by St. Paul's in London, but it doesn't belong to us. There's a charm to the mosque of Omar, though one has to remove one's shoes. But the Cathedral of Clementa is the church that I'd always choose. Every transit is the concept of a truly artistic mind. Each mosaic is archaic in the individually designed. Is Rococo Confuoco with a splendor to dim the eye? It bewitches with its riches and the altars a mass of green lapis lazuli. at the Ritz in Paris and my comfort was quite complete when I stay at the Ritz in New York I am given the bridal suite I'm well known at the Ritz in London is a favorite part of court but the Cathedral of Clementa is the ritziest of them all not to be not too small is the coziest church of all. Not too grand, not too mean. It's the sweetest cathedral we've ever seen. Clementa! That wonderful town. Clementa, where the sun beats incessantly down on the heavily gilded dome of the place that I call home. Clementa. And bravo, Lieutenant. Oh, Fabiola, <laughs> how good to see you. You will stay for tea. No, I only look at him for a moment to pay my respects to his eminence. Imagine. Eminence. You remember Lady Parvula de Parzoust. No, she is not one of us, but I think she might be one over. Not I, Eulalia. Nowadays, religion of any sort is quite foreign to me. Although, of course, I still find a lot to enjoy in a really well-staged ceremony. <laughs> Where is Baby, by the way? I think I see Mrs. Yarge approaching with her. Ah, yes, here comes Babykin. Ooh, it's enough to make one's stomach capsize. And now she's sleeping like a closed-up flower. Oh, she'll make such a cunning little Christian. Almost as cunning as her mamma. <laughs> I can't stand it. I really can't. Oh, really, I don't know what's come over Elizabeth lately. One would have thought she'd be happy to have her son again and a grandchild into the bargain. But she treats the whole thing like a second-rate Greek drama. Maybe I should give her a sedative of seaweed juice. That always calms the nerves and settles the stomach. Oh, try it if you like, Mrs. Yashinavalkia, but I would recommend a bit of prayer and mortification. 
I would ask Sister Ecclesia to give a helping hand, but of course it's her talking day. Was it her I heard her looing down the drive? Uh, probably. Now, Mrs. Yudge, let me carry the babe for a little while. As I am to be a godmother, I had better get used to the feel of it. <laughs> be careful you don't yes. wake her, Mrs. Hurst, yes. my dear. She has a yell like to Uja Bird and Labour. <laughs> Uh, let us go to the house for tea, Eminence. Oh, I have instructed Cook to prepare your favorite herring sandwiches. Thank you, dear lady. And if I might have some lapsang with a drop of Holland's in it? Holland's gin for the spleen is what I always recommend. And you, <laughs> Pavula? No, thank you, Eulalia. I have ordered a la carte at the Stranger's Hotel, and their dinner hours are barbarous. Well, we shall see you tomorrow at the ceremony. Uh, Lieutenant? I, I think I'll take a stroll after Dick. And Mary, I've seen so little of the Valmouth countryside. Oh, you should. The autumn tints on Spadder Tor are supposed to be quite heart-rending. Oh. Come, Eminence. After you, dear lady. Oh, thank goodness we're alone, Mrs. Yarge. It was, of course, you whom I came to see. I'm making my final bid. Final, my lady? Yes. Although I fear he must be cold, or else he's decadent. For I have known men, Mrs. Yashnavalkia, yes, and many men, too, who have found us little women the most engrossing things in life. He is inhuman, my lady, and that is sure. Oh, I want to spank the white walls of his cottage. I obtain you all you desire. Only give me time. I have no more time to spare. The Valmouth season is practically over, and I shall have to return to London unfulfilled. Well, what do you wish me to do? I overheard his grandmother sending him up here with some fowls for tomorrow's banquet. He will be arriving at any moment. Go down to the gate and tell him to walk up this way, and I shall be waiting. Very well, my lady, and may Funa smile on you. Funa? That is how we Eastern ladies refer to Venus. I know I should despise myself, but I don't. Such perfect cant, though, with four honeymoons in the hotel to be forced to take to the fields. Oh, Harry. Oh, Harry. Are you gazing down from heaven on little me? And are you simply horrified by what you see? Don't be, dear Harry, for you left your little wifey all alone to lead her lifey, and she's doing it the only way she knows. Would you like me to explain to you? Here goes. But it was only a passing face. For at the weekend I went shooting and it broke the plumber's bed because I bagged a brace of pheasant and a beetle as well. But then he beat me where it hurt me. Can be. <laughs>
Father Waring And the stoker, I recall, was quite unsparing So I resolved to take the veil and change my ways But it was only a very transitory, evanescent, insubstantial, quite unpleasant You, is it? Yes, it is I. But don't they say good afternoon in this part of the country? Good afternoon. Don't go. Won't you tell me about... about your flocks? I have to deliver these fowls at the house. They can wait, surely. After all, they are dead. Whereas we, dear fellow, are very much alive. Now, don't he come near me. Why? Do you have the flu? You know what I mean. I told Mrs. Yarge I didn't want no part of it. I knew you did, and it was very forward of you. You know, there's forward and forward. Meaning what? You should be a respectable widow woman. Instead of which I am. I don't know what you are. Why don't you find out? It might be quite an agreeable surprise. I've enough to do without being surprised. Country logic. Well, if this is how they behave London way. Oh, you great big pastoral boy. Now then, missus. Oh, you might at least lay aside the carcasses. They do detract so from the ardour of the moment. Why don't he leave me be? Because I don't wish to. Ah, those great gilt freckles. I'll uh, uh, out. Much better submit. I won't, I say. I say you will. Someone's coming. Quick, into the chapel before they see us. But in, I say. In, in. I saw some struggling figures, but there seems to be no one. I'm sorry, Father, you were saying... Yes. That you must have faith, my child. All may not be lost. But tomorrow is almost upon us, and Eulalia is quite determined. She has arranged everything down to the last altar candle. What can interfere with it now? Without a priest? But she has the cardinal. I must say I thought his eminence would raise some objection... But he seems to be enjoying the whole Saturnalia himself. Mm, Cardinal Pirelli has strange tendencies. Tendencies, Father? But there are rumours, strong rumours, from Clemenza. Reports even from Rome. Reports? Of what? Ecclesiastical misdemeanours, extramural escapades, <gasps> and the disgraceful affair of the Duchesa de Nazianzi's dog. What did the dog do? It was christened in the cathedral. Father! Christened Clapsy by the Cardinal. But, but this means... Yes, my child, oh. but at the moment I am powerless. But we must do something. We must do something. Oh, my darling, Dick, my darling. No, oh, no, no, no. Oh. Calm yourself, oh. Mrs. Thorifer. Let us go into the chapel and pray for guidance. Oh, yes, yes. Let us go. Oh. What, what, what is it? Sacrilege. Blasphemy. Chickens, Father. Chickens. Ch chickens? Yes. In the front. Oh, uh, good day to you, Father. Good day. Uh, oh, um... Lady de Panzust. Pardula. Feathers. Chicken feathers. Tell you, Lelia. Tell you, Lelia. That her pew cushions badly need restuffing. <laughs> no, Neary, not now. Why not? Because, because it's tea time. In the east, we don't care what time it is. I know, but this is England, and anyway, someone might observe us. I like love out of doors. That big old bedded hair hatch frightens me. Oh, don't say that, my darling. Hair hatch is our home. No. Oh, but Neary. I'm tired of hair hatch. I'm tired of vomit. Neary. I want the sun. The joy. The heat.
Where the trees are green with parrots and the custard apples grow, that is the place that I call home. That's where I want to go. Where the golden toad sits dreaming underneath the orchid tree. That is the place that I call home. That's where I want to be. Where the scent of the frangipani flows to see where the breezes blow. And at night there's the plop as the mangoes drop from the branches where the fireflies glow. Where the coral spreads its flowers in a sea that's greeny blue, that is the place that I call home. That's where I want to be with you. Say we go there. Say we will go home. Well, perhaps if you're a good girl, one day. But we must go through the ceremony tomorrow. My aunt expects it. But we is already married. Not in the eyes of the church. Oh, please, Mary, for my sake. Oh, all right. But I do it for you, not for that old cardinal. Oh, but Mary, Mary, Mary. I love you, Dick. I ask for nothing better, dear, than to be the wool of your vest. I'd have black myself for you, Dick. All over, every day. But you never told me your tastes. But everything's useless now. For very soon, Dick, I'll be dead. I loved a man and he said... Cold now, so deep. I suppose the tide will bear me out to sea. I'm so lightsome, so slim, much better figure than hers. Oh, bread and butter, I'll tell six stocking gorgons, and I'll fed you flat beef and underseal before this long yellow hair. Three weeks next Wednesday, one and one, late ninety seven, just a pair of half the four, Mrs. Jones. Huh? Leave me be. You mustn't. You shan't. You won't. You can't. I can and I will. Help! Aid! Assistance! Sucker! What's the matter, sister? She wants to kill herself. Yes, I do. And I'm going to. But it's so wonderful to be alive, exist, breathe. Aren't you supposed to be under a vow of silence? Yes. But today is my talking day. I can speak. I can utter, I can scream, I can mutter, I can say everything I want to say. And there's no one to say me nay. For today is my talking day. I can rant, I can chatter, I can shriek, what's it matter? I can bark, I can bellow, I can bay. Not a soul has to say I may. For today is my talking day. Words, 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 waiting for me to speak. Words, 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 how I wish I knew Greek. I can bawl like a 
Tomorrow instead. You wait. Tomorrow is the wedding. Why don't you come with me? When you? Oh. Well, love, passion, courtship, wooing, darling, sweetheart. Oh, shall we go? <laughs> Tomorrow my lips will be sealed again. My heart will be cold and congealed again. But till then, raise the roof and shout hooray! For a day! This is the day, the day that my little Neary, my princess, my Neary fairy becomes Mrs. Captain Dick Thoroughfare. Oh, Allah ilaha. Is that you, Mrs. Yarrick? Why, Mrs. Took, have you come to attend the wedding? Yes, Mrs. Yarrick. At least she's having a Christian wedding. <laughs> That's just to please Mrs. Hurst. They are already married in the East. Pa, a native wedding. It is so simple, so beautiful. Oh, all that happened is that each lays a hand on the torso of the beloved. <gasps> Fie for shame, Mrs. Yarch. <laughs> but what need is there for more? Oh, dear, it shocked me that Neri should renounce Allah for the Nazarene. <gasps> Simon. Decent widow, Mrs. Yatch. You are a wicked woman. Oh, me wicked? Now that is a libel. Libel or not, things haven't been the same since you come to Falmouth. Don't fret yourself, Mrs. Took. Once I see my Neary settled it here, I shall leave this place. Falmouth is beginning to give me the ennui. He'll be going back home. Oh, I don't know. I shall just sail away down the river. Down the river? Well, though I shouldn't say so, I'll miss you, Mrs. Yard. With the winter coming, my joints will be all tied up in knots, and I doubt if I'll see another spring. Why, Mrs. Took, my dear, you talk nothing but nonsense. I never came to see your blossom in a acacia tree. Its leaves are falling now as summer ends, but nevertheless, We've had some good time. Oh, yes, this is, yeah, it's true, we did. And taking it all in all, I'd like to feel we're friends. And when I think 
Like a sky that's permanently blue But I will miss you, Mrs. Took Yes, I will, Mrs. Took, miss you And I won't miss the frightful bore Of English Sundays and what's more I'll never miss the foggy, foggy dew Yes, I will, Mrs. Took, miss you. Although we had our quarrels, they mattered not a pin. We may have different morals, but we're sisters under the skin. Oh, that's right, Mrs. Yai. <laughs> and when I reach that tropic isle, as evening falls, I'll sit and smile To think of all that's passed between us two And I will miss you, Mrs. Took And I will, Mrs. Yaj, miss you And I will miss you, Mrs. Took I will As life went on before you came, I'll do the things I always used to do. But I will miss you, Mrs. Yaj. Yes, I will, Mrs. Yaj, miss you. And though we're friends, I must confess, I can't abide the way you dress. Those even things you say upsets me too. <laughs> but I will miss you, Mrs. Yaj. Yes, I will, Mrs. Yaj, miss you. You've turned us topsy turvy with all those things you've done. It's left me kind of nervy, but I must admit it was. Fun. <laughs> <sighs> and when the winter brings the snow, I sit and watch the cinders glow and think of all that's past between us two. And I will miss you, Mrs. Yash. And I will, Mrs. Took, miss you. And I will miss you, Mrs. Yatch. I will miss you. We must keep in touch. Mrs. Yajnavalkya, your niece has been calling for you to help her dress. She refuses to let Fowler touch her. Oh, she is unaccustomed to clothes, Mrs. Thoroughfare, my dear. I can well believe it. <laughs> How good of you to come, Mrs. Took. Under the circumstances, I mean, has your granddaughter quite recovered? Oh, she's a brawny girl. And in any case, she barely wet her toes. So, Mr. and Lady Saunter, how nice to see you. At a time like this, one needs one's friends around one. Oh, oh, oh you can be sure that we wouldn't miss it for well. I can't think what is delaying you, Lelia. Uh, should we go into the chapel? It looks as if it might rain. Oh, dear. A storm, yes. do you think? <laughs> the wrath of the Almighty. Oh! Oh. Tell me, Elizabeth. Will I do? You really? I never saw anything like you. I hope the dear cardinal won't tell me that I'm unorthodox. Or do you think he will? Take it off, you Lelia. 
I shall not, Take Elizabeth. it off. No. But why should you conceal yourself behind that odious black mask? I wear it, dear, only because a white face seems to frighten baby. You're beyond anything, Eulalia. And are those wings really necessary? Oh, it's a splendid Ah, so there, dear, dear Richard. Oh, Let be. us hope the bride will soon join us. And we mustn't keep her standing about. There's quite a chill in here. And those clouds. I had such a cold on my honeymoon, I remember. I never really ceased sneezing. Ah, there's dear Pavula looking ravishing. Pavula, you look delightful. Eulalia, it's you, is it? I confess that I hardly recognize you. That hat is a triumph. Where did you get it, Pavula? Vivi van der Start. Her boast is she makes only hats for happy women. Oh, oh. Good day, my lady. Listen to that. When the peacocks cry, I always get a feeling of foreboding. Oh, Allah, Ilaha, the bride, she approaches. You lady, are you lady? I appeal to you. Let us stop the ceremony now, before it's too late. Nonsense, Elizabeth. Oh, if only I knew where to find Father Collins. Hush, Elizabeth. Here they come. Les oiseaux amoureux, chers oiseaux, paradise uccellinis, delicious vogels. Ooh, 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 my darling son. Hush, mother. leave of your senses? The wedding cannot proceed. Nor if it does. Of course the wedding can proceed. Forgive us, Emily. Uh, my dear child, put if your If he sets in foot inside Dwester, Signora, it will be desecrated forever. What? I have here in my hand a deed of excommunication signed by the Holy Father in Rome. Cardinal Pirelli, your sins have found you out. You are excommunicated. It can't be true. It can't be. Eminent. For the sin of blasphemy, for the sin of impurity, for the sin of mockery, for the sin of dressing up in disguise, for the sin of reading and writing sacrilegious literature, for the sin of christening a dog, the Holy Church casts you out. <laughs> Up my holiday. Go back to the house, Mrs. Thoroughfare. Yes. Come, Elizabeth. 
back to hell. Eulalia is all alone there. Merciful heaven! Oh. It's like doomsday! I'm much afraid, Elizabeth, that time has caught up with us at last. Troubles that Mrs. Bjorti suffers from her arm bon point. Why, Neri Esther has been crying again. I cry for little Richard. Little Richard with no papa. Children without a papa on this island are quite commonplace, my dear. However, I shall find you a new husband. Soon there will come another ship into the harbor, and this time, little Neri, perhaps you will find an admiral. An admiral? Yes, and then you will go and live in a fine house in London. Cra! Oh, but I wanted to be the princess of the palace. The palace of Hare Hatch. Hare Hatch. Hare Hatch is nothing but a pile of ashes. Alice sent the fire from heaven and destroyed it. Poof! In a flash of lightning. Then we shall never see it again. No, my child. It is all gone. And Valmouth, too. Gone like a dream. It was the will of Allah. But I shall remember it. Yes, and I shall remember it too. It was a pleasant place to spend a season, or as we Eastern ladies say, to pass the time. Little Richard, sleep. Sleep good, little boy baby. Sleep tight. Yes, it is all gone. Sometimes I think, oh, the pity of it. In Valmouth, I had such an extensive clientele, all the best ladies of the county. Mrs. Yage, they would say to me, you must have magic in your fingers. Yes, my dear, I would reply. That is exactly what I do have. Oh, they will miss me, those old ladies of Valmouth. They will miss their Mrs. Yage. But perhaps they are dead, or perhaps they are living somewhere else. Who knows? Still, I would like to take a trip to England sometime when I have found you a new husband. Where would you go? Oh, I don't know. Bournemouth is nice, and then there is Weymouth or Exmouth, or even Portsmouth. But none of them can ever compare with Valmouth. There's nowhere to compare with the air of Valmont. There's no light Come back. as bright as the Near light Esther. Come back. Valmont. If only she wouldn't like run at one so much and rumple so one's hair. So lightsome, so slim, much better thicker than hers. Ah, oh, you're a simple one. Oh. Why, Elizabeth? Tonight, you look positively young. I always say that there is no joy like the coolness of a white dress after the sweetness of confession. Fine, her affair. Size is not altogether important when one is dealing with the eternities. I'm making a bow pass. That's a posy, Mrs. Yard. Blood-headed booby! To Valmouth, by way of fleet! In Valmouth by Sandy Wilson, based on the novel by Ronald Furbank, Elizabeth Welsh played Mrs. Yajnia Valkia, Fenella Fielding, Lady Pavela de Prince Doust, Doris Hare, Granny Took, 
Elaine Delmar, Neri Esther, Maxine Audley, Mrs. Hurst Pierpoint. Cardinal Pirelli was played by Aubrey Woods, Mrs. Thoroughfair, Betty Hardy, Thetis Took, Patsy Rowlands, Sir Victor Vatt, Donald Scott, Sister Ecclesia, Marcia Aston, David Took, Stephen Pacey, Captain Dick Thoroughfair, John Rye, Lieutenant Jack Horwood, Michael Deacon, Father Colin Marnie, Gordon Whiting, Fines, Michael Derbyshire, Nitt, Ian Charleston, Fowler, Celia Helder, Carrie, Hilary Patterson, Madame Mimosa, Marcia Owen. Book, music and lyrics were by Sandy Wilson, music arranged and conducted by Richard Holmes, technical presentation by Gordon Bowen, technical assistance by John Whitehall, Carol McShane, Jane Brinsmead and Peter Nobis, adapted for radio and produced by Glyn Dearman. The program was first broadcast in 1975.